Hello and on behalf of the Mindalia.com team, welcome. Today Silvia Albrecht is joining us to tell us about messages of the wild animals for us humans. So let's talk a bit about her. Silvia Albrecht is a biologist. She helps people and animals or plants as a translator, um, solving problems to improve coexistence. So let's not delay this any further and let's say well Welcome to Silvia. Hello, Silvia. How are you? <laughs> Hello, Dala. I'm fine. Thank you. Thanks for the invitation to Medallia. Thank you very much for being here, for wanting to share this space with me and with us. Um, and I don't want to spend your time. So, Silvia, whenever you want, you can start and I'll see you later. <laughs> Okay, thank you. So, yes, uh, you already heard that I'm a biologist and that I communicate between humans and animals. And I'm talking to uh, pets, but I'm also to, uh, talk to wildlife. And today I will share three communications with wildlife with you. The first one is with the griffin vulture, and it's about the teamwork. The second communication uh, was with the frog and what we do with nature. <laughs> and the last one is with the queen bee, because you can also talk to insects. And uh, it was a communication about life and death. But first of all, how can I communicate with wildlife? So what I do is I use telepathy. And you would say, wow, well, telepathy, it's not possible. But telepathy isn't only a gift for me. It's a general language of souls. And also you can use telepathy. And it's relatively easy to learn it again. Um, so what is telepathy? It's sending messages to another soul via pictures, via videos, for example, I use many times videos, and also words or emotions. So it's very individual. So for example, I receive more images and words, others receive more emotions. And thanks to a translating tool, it suits perfectly for your understanding uh, what kind of information or how it's translated to you. And the good thing with telepathy, it's completely regardless of the distance. It doesn't matter if I'm here in Spain, where I live, or you're in Australia or Argentina, it works worldwide. It's like with the internet when you have a phone call. Um, so many people ask me, you are a bio biologist, um, and telepathy isn't really accepted in science. I always say, let's wait and see what quantum physics will give answers in some years or whatever. And independently of what the science says, I know telepathy is working and many, many other people who use it to absolutely agree with me. But why telepathy is so important for us? Um, because that allows us to communicate to animals and we can, or also to plants, but today we talk about animals. And for me, it's astonishing who animals really are. We think, wow, we have a high level as humans, but also animals can have a very high level. And telepathy allows us to understand them, what they think, what they try to say or what they do, or also have communications about everything. Um, it's possible to communicate with telepathy to each other because this is so-called net where we are connected with. Some call it the universe, some call it a more spiritual way or whatever. I call it the net. It's like the internet. And we are all connected to it, like with the router to the internet. And I have an ID and the other animal or the other soul, because uh, for me, it's a language of souls um, are connected. And when I know the other ID, for example, when I see an animal or when I see a photo, I can connect it via a video chat. 
or whatever. And then we can start a communication. It's very important to understand how that works. So um, it must not be an animal which is close to you. And so with translation, since it's very individual, um, I receive words in different meanings, which is automatically translated. So also this red net as a kind of Google Translate. So if you hear complex words in these communications, that doesn't mean that the animal also uses these words. They have not these words. It's translated from my perspective to understand it. So I will share the first communication with you about griffin vultures. I'm quite sure that you heard about griffin vultures or maybe you saw some. Sometimes you see them in Western movies where they're sitting on a fence waiting that someone will die and they feed on the carcass and afterwards it's, it's a mess, to be honest. Most people say they are ugly because they have these long neck and with these white feathers here. And sometimes, yeah, they can be a little bit dirty as well afterwards. <laughs> but anyway, um, they have not the best fame in the world of animals, what we think. And I wouldn't say they are ugly. For me, they are really, really beautiful animals. Um, why? First of all, they are really important in the ecosystem they, because they clean up everything. Um, and they are also social. They are smart flyers and they can do a lot more. So I live here in Spain and I live in the region Reno de los Mayos, which is close to the Pyrenees. And we have a very big population here. And it's normal when I sit on my rock um, for meditation or whatever, uh, that many vultures, these griffin vultures, pass, um, pass me in the air. And it was one of these days, it was a sunny day, and I was sitting there, and there was a group of approximately eight vultures, and uh, they passed by uh, in the air and started with a circle. But it was a little different circle. They also circled when they found some food, but that circle was a little bit slow, and it, was, it wasn't in a thermal wave or so. So I was wondering, so... What are they doing? So I asked them by telepathy. So may I ask, what are you doing? First of all, I say hello. And the first answer was, I don't have time. That's absolutely normal because they are wild animals. To be a wild animal, it's a full-time job. You have to search for food. You have to protect your territory when you're a territorial animal or, or whatever. So they are not pets who are waiting for food. These animals have to do a lot <laughs> to find food. So with animal communication, you learn to be patient. <laughs> so doesn't matter. I ask another one in the group, one of these circling um, vultures, and I got an answer. And I will share the words how I received them. We fly together to create a bond. We exchange information. We work as a team because we see more in a team. And I was wondering, what is a bond? So I asked, what is a bond? This bond is for communication, she answered. It was a female voice. It is also a mutual promise to inform each other when someone has found something. It keeps us together. Together we see more. We share together. We survive better together. And in telepathy, you can also receive an immediate knowledge or information in a second. And I got that information too. It's a ritual. And I was completely astonished that they have a ritual before they started to search for food. Rituals are known um, with animals, for example, elephants, but I didn't know that griffin vultures also have rituals. And so that bond is a lot more than only a bond. It's a promise to keep the team together. So it was team building. It's an alliance that they have 
that team to share things, it's, it's a little bit more than team building. And it's also a channel for exchanging information via telepathy. And while I was sitting there and thinking about the words, these vultures started to spread and in all directions. So uh, two in that direction, two in the other and so on. So, but they had this bond and two flew to the direction of these white uh, wild river we have here, uh, wild water river. And they started to circle. That means in that case, it was a little bit faster. Um, they found something, but the others were so far away. And after a very short time, all came back and started to circle where the food was. So it was true. It was really a bond. And as soon as these two animals found something, they sent that information to the others via telepathy and the others knew, okay, they are there. We will come and we will share the food. While they are circling, they also give a visual information to other vultures who are not part of that bond, but they can see them. And they also came to get a little bit from that dead body, from the food. And I was completely surprised about that. And I started to think, uh, who are we? How often do we work together in teams as they do? Because they share things so that everybody can get something. Also with others who are not part of the team. Maybe on the next day, it will be the opposite. Another team will find something. They can see it and they are allowed to share with them the food they found. And I'm also wondering about communication. I work many, many times in teams, also very international teams. And how often do we give information so quick to each other? And do we really have these uh, alliances and promises in that kind of team building? So I think they are one of the most beautiful animals for me. And what is ugly? Is it outside? how you look like, or is it inside? So I think we humans can learn a lot from them. Another communication was with a frog. Um, it was also on a sunny day. I had a walk here because we have a lot of nature here. And uh, I found a pond at the foot of a slope. It was a quite high slope, so I couldn't see on top. And in that pond was a frog. And I thought, okay, let's have a communication with him or with her. Um, and I asked, hello, do you have time for a communication? And the answer was, no, you are human. Uh, well, okay, I was a little bit surprised. I know these answers from deer and wild boars because humans are predators to them. So it needs a long time to get good communication with them. And I said, well, I'm sorry, um, I won't harm you, um, no worries. Um, but if you tell me why you don't like humans or you don't want to communicate with me, um, it's all right because I can give you your opinion to other people to explain, mm, so why don't you want to talk to me because I'm human. And what I do right now. Yeah. And the answer was humans bring poisons. And when it rains, the poison come down in our pond. Then many get sick and die. Many of us died this year. There are only a few of us here. And I couldn't understand about which poison he was talking. So um, and I couldn't see on top. So I climbed a little bit and I found a grain field. And the frog was talking about insecticides and pesticides. And I was also thinking, wow, that's where we are famous for. We are very famous for animals, but not always in a positive way. And with that poison, we do not only destroy the, this family of the frog, 
uh, we also destroy ourselves because a poison is a poison and we start with allergies, we start with intolerances and whatever. And we destroy, destroy the nature, we destroy the bees. The list is long. So it's not the time to stick the hat in the soil um, as an ostrich. But we have alternatives. We can use organic products, for example. And then it's completely without insecticides and pesticides who are poisons. And I would say, let's look forward. Um, uh, and I'm, uh, I'm waiting for that day when the animals, the wild animals can say again, welcome you. So let's do it. Uh, let's change our life in that direction and we can do definitely more. Let's buy organic products and think in a sustainable way and everybody can change something, even if it's a little bit. The last communication, uh, which I will share today with you, uh, was a, with the queen bee. And that's more on a spiritual level. I have to explain it a little bit how that works. So when uh, I communicate with another animal or with another soul, I communicate from my brain to the brain or nervous system in that case. Insects have no brain. Um, I can communicate directly. But what I can also do is I can talk to the soul directly. So how can I do that? Because the soul normally is much better and has such a high capacity, uh, but it's regulated via the body, via the brain of an animal, of a human or whatever. And so I can have very... Uh, small conversations when I talk directly to an insect, but when I talk to directly to the soul without the way through the body, you can have a full conversation. And that's what I share here with you. So I was standing in front of the beehive and um, I saw, thought, of, oh, I never talk to bees, so let's try that. And I know it's the same with the queen. You can't go ask directly. And I thought, okay, well, uh, how can I do that? Uh, hello, may I speak to the queen? <laughs> Sounds a little, little bit official, but it worked out. And the answer was yes. So I introduced myself also to the beehive and to the bee. and. Um, the answer was after I asked her, how, how do you feel? I'm tired. I need a rest. I've laid many eggs and I lay more eggs, but only a few more. The summer is ending and I'm old. Laying eggs has become exhausting. I won't live much longer. And she's talking about the age. She was between three or four years old. And in that context, I was thinking, can I ask her that? But yeah, I can. What do you think about death? And the answer was, it is important. I have little energy now. When my body is no longer alive, my soul can recover and I get new energy. Then I will be a queen again with more experience and I will have a new body. So in my new life, I have all my energy again. I and I can be productive again. She was talking about the circle of life. She was talking about reincarnation. It's not the first time that I hear reincarnation um, from animals. Um, I also had another communication with her when she was dead. Um, telepathy is the language of soul. So you can also talk to a soul uh, when the body is dead. And in that, she said, everything is energy. It is time for recovery, for thinking, for having a break. And so the circle of life is for uh, renovation. On When a soul has no body anymore, it's for learning and thinking about what happened in my life. 
And with a new body, after you have a new one, um, you start the circle of life again. And I don't want to say if you have no energy, then please stop your life. Oh my God, I would want to tell you exactly the opposite. Use your life to learn as much as you can, do as much as you can, and get the most out of it. Because afterwards you can think about it and bring all that new experiences in your subconsciousness mind, in your new life. So it's you have the full capacity here in your actual life. And that's wonderful. It's also wonderful when um, it comes to an end. You must not be afraid. I know where I'm talking about. I also had a near-death experience in my life. And I agree with her. It's nothing where you must be afraid of. And so the B and I, we agree that it's a normal process. It's natural. And we must do the best out of our life, what she's still or was still doing. And to sum it up, think positive and learn as much as you can. Try something, make mistakes and learn. That's where the life is about. So we can learn a lot from nature. We can learn a lot from animals. And sometimes it's also in the other direction because it's in exchange normally. Many native tribes know that. And I think we lost a little bit the track uh, of the humankind and we can go back or not back. We go further, but get the contact to the nature again. And what we can learn from wildlife is uh, from these vultures, be more social to each other, think about teamwork and sharing information and sharing resources with each other. I'm not talking about humans. We can also share it with other species. Uh, we can understand the animals. And in that context, we can understand ourselves. And to understand sometimes our own emotions or our own feelings and what other species feel. Um, we can start again with a natural way of dealing with life and death and also to share knowledge. Animals, especially wild animals, and I have to say that here as well, plants too, <laughs> they have such a deep knowledge about nature, about ecosystems, about their own species, about processes in general. So we can share, share these informations and get a lot of information to protect the nature in a better way. And don't forget that telepathy is the language of the souls and everybody can learn it again. I had the luck that I never forget that in my life because I was in the lucky position to have a family who said, okay, you can talk to animals, that's all right. <laughs> so I was the animal communicator in my family. Um, but uh, um, so it's quite easy for me to talk to them, but it's also possible to learn it again, especially with animals, with plants and all forms who have a soul. And let's share. What a beautiful information, Sylvia. Thank you very much for sharing all this knowledge with us. Um, of course, we are starting to incorporate some questions from the people watching us, if you agree. Um, Charlie from the United States says, how to start practicing telepathic communication with my dog? I think in some cases, uh, you already talk to your dog. 
because um, sometimes you get a spontaneous information or suddenly you know what's going up or um, the dog shouldn't do something. And uh, then you think, well, why is he doing that? Because you already had the picture in mind, you shouldn't do that. But the uh, dog understood, I shall do that. So um, the basic parts are already inside of you. And uh, there are many courses where you can learn telepathy. Um, I am not the only um, animal communicator who offers courses. There are a lot in the world. And uh, it's a process, uh, the method. I can explain the method in five minutes, but it's experiencing, it's uh, understanding um, the correct content out of the information. That's where you need time for also to learn another language like Chinese. But telepathy right. is easier than let's, Chinese. Let's continue, Sylvia, with Emily. She is asking from Australia and she says, I'm about to be a mother. Um, I always wanted to have a cat or a dog, but I was afraid of the responsibility. Do you think this is a good time? What benefits do animals have in raising children? <laughs> uh, I would say thanks to the animals around us in my family, they were brilliant teachers. They were brilliant teachers in telepathy. They were brilliant teachers in other things. Uh, I would say with a baby, mm, you're, I don't know how old your uh, baby kid or whatever it is. Um, uh, I wouldn't start when it's so small, a little bit older, um, because then you have a lot of work to do with the dog or the cat and with a little one. Uh, but as soon as you think, okay, you can handle everything, it would be great. It would be also great if uh, the dog wouldn't be alone or the cat wouldn't be alone. Do I have to? Monica Ortiz from Facebook and I think from Spain says, are animals aware they are used to feed us? What do they feel about this? You mean when um, she could means, you bring... she means if um, do animals know that we eat them some of us so, yeah yeah uh, many know um, first of all because of telepathy because we humans always send information without filters so they know and especially when you have a situation where another animal is killed in front of another animal. They also know it. It depends on the species. So it's a, some species or individuals know, others not. It's a very, very difficult um, answer. So I don't have to explain it here, but they feel it, yes. Plants too. And the second part of the question was, uh, do they understand that? Do they understand that humans um, do eat meat or fish? Or what do they think about this? For many, it is um, not in that situation when they are killed. But we are part of the nature. And fe uh, feeding and growing and feeding is a normal circle. A lion, a lion feeds on an antelope. This is a normal process. So we are part of that. And then it doesn't matter if we eat plants or animals because we are part of the circle. It, the question is more how we handle them. Is it in a responsible and a good way, not that we have to eat something. We have to uh, care for them and they must have a good life. All right, thank you, um, Silvia. Let's continue then with um, Juliet from Argentina. Could you give us some easy tips for taking care of nature every day? <laughs> um, 
I would say start with the context. The rest comes automatically because when you start to understand nature, you will receive so any so many informations what you can do. Go into the nature and try to feel it. Uh, be in the nature when you have the possibility. I know right now we have different uh, difficult times, but. Uh, if you have not the possibility, there are so wonderful websites about sust uh, sustainability and what you can do with organic products, for example. So start in these two directions. Let's continue with Jose from Mexico. He says, could we use telepathy to give calm to our animals when they are about to die? My dog is very ill and I think he's about to go. Yes. Um, that's a very important uh, question because we always think, okay, uh, the animal is sick. I think it's better to bring it to the vet and it's the last path in life. But to be honest, first of all, it's better to ask the animal, do you really want to die? Especially if you're sick. And so the animal should decide. And with telepathy, you can guide the animal too. For example, I bring sometimes animals from the life to the other side to make sure that the soul is safe. Um, Silvia, we've got a Spanish question, so if you agree, I'm reading it in Spanish mm -hmm. and after that I'm translating it to English. Gerardo desde España dice, um, ¿Cómo comenzaste y cuándo a comunicarte con los animales? Eh, ¿Es un sentimiento o parece más como una conversación hablada? Um, ¿Alguna vez cuando todo esto comenzó a pasar te pensaste, wow, me estoy volviendo loca? Um, in English now. How did you start communicating with animals? Is it a feeling or more like a conversation? Did you ever think that you were going crazy at the beginning? Luckily, telepathy is a normal part of my life for all of my life because I didn't um, forget it, how to use it. And uh, of course, sometimes when you talk to others, so you're a little bit mad, but um, since many people ex uh, experience it in seminars and it's working, uh, I know, no, no, it's not, it's not in my, uh, I'm not crazy, especially um, when you start with a channel to open a channel to an animal, it's important to close it afterwards, or you have voices in your head. Voices, in my case, that's what you ask, um, how I receive it, because for me, it's, it's a mixture. It's like to, to talk to you. And I, re I personally receive words and images because if it's a very complex communication, I close my eyes and I can see things. Um, it's, but it's very individual. Maybe when you learn telepathy, you're a different type and you receive information in a different way. Let's go with one question more. Scarlett from the United States says, as with some people, um, may we meet an animal from another past life? Is this possible? <laughs> um, some other animal communicators say yes. Uh, I can't say yes or no, because I had not that case in my life up to now, but I experienced so many crazy things in my life where I thought, no, that's not possible. And afterwards I had to say, oh, well, <laughs> it's possible. <laughs> so <laughs> maybe, um, and if other really um, famous people had that, uh, where I also trust in them, I say, Maybe it's possible. Because, <laughs> you know, Sylvia, sometimes we've got like um, this connection with our animals and you feel like, wow, um, he was my lover in another life. So no. <laughs> um, I understand this question because I've got a dog and I think he, he has been my dog for the 
the last uh, 1000 years. So, um, Sylvia, thank you very, very much for having shared all this information with us one more time. It has been a real pleasure for me having you here and sharing this space with you. Thank you for answering all these questions. And of course, I'm giving you a few seconds for saying goodbye or for sharing your final thoughts with us if you want. Thank you, Dale. Yeah, what I wish for all of us is this connection again with nature because it feels so brilliant and there are so many possibilities. And if we have more respect for nature, we also have more respect for ourselves because sometimes we forget ourselves and how we feel, where we are, where we are connected with. And that's my wish. Um, that's my wish that all, you, the humankind, and yeah, that we get the connection back with the nature, with all the living forms on earth, with the animals, mushrooms, plants, and yeah, become part of the whole again. Thank you very much for um, this beautiful wishes you gave us, um, Silvia. Um, and I hope to see you very soon. And to you, dear friends of Mindalia, I just want to remind you that um, you can join us through our different platforms, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, VK and Vaughn Live. I also want you to know that you can um, enjoy all our content in Mindalia Radio, 24 hours of conscious content. And you can find all of this in our website, www.mindaliaradio.com. Before saying goodbye, you have to know that Mindalia.com is a non-profit organization. You can collaborate with us by liking our content, leaving us a positive comment, subscribing to our channel or different platforms, as I said before, and of course, sharing this video with someone else. Finally, if you want, you can donate through a link you will find in our website, www.mindalia.com. By doing so, you help us to keep creating more content like the one you enjoyed with us today. Having said that and feeling really, really grateful, um, I am ready to say goodbye, but just for now, until a next Mindalia live streaming. Thank you very, very much for being there.